So welcome to London, I'm Alex. I'm here in uh, two capacities. One is I head up the Kids Office of Prana, but I'm also a very proud member of the board of the Swedish Chamber of Commerce in the UK. So I'm here in kind of dual roles today. Um, but yeah, first off, welcome to London. It is the best week to be here in London in terms because it's UK FinTech Week. So we're celebrating all things FinTech. I've just come across from uh, a global summit where it's amazing to see so many people back together talking about fintech and really seeing the support that there is in the UK for, for fintech businesses. So I'll talk over the next few minutes a bit about uh, Klarna and our journey, but also some of the lessons we've had as a, as a European fintech coming into the UK, and hopefully this can be helpful for you. Um, so just briefly, before I get going, for those who don't know uh, Klarna, um, just a few stats. Um, the slide's always changing, so I need to refer to it to make sure I get the numbers right. So yeah, we started in 2005 in Stockholm in Sweden, and if we fast forward now 17 years, we're now in 45 countries around the world, um, we have over 147 million consumers around the world that use our services, and those services span from uh, payment services, which we're very well known for, um, particularly in the UK for Financo Later, um, but more broadly, uh, we also have, have a range of shopping services to help um, consumers when they're shopping, particularly online. Um, and also banking services too, so retail banking services for cards, accounts, uh, savings accounts. A whole load of uh, different services. I think our mantra and our mission amongst all those different services is to help consumers save money, save time, and help them worry less about their finances. So we're always looking for different ways to help them do that. Um, since our payment services, we have over 400,000 different retailers around the world, over 50 million downloads of our app, and it's really important. Embracing you know, new payment methods, kind of 
uh, shift away from credit cards across to uh, interest-free financial aid terms. It's been, you know, it's been surprisingly few after left in the chase in, in all candidates. So I think the UK is a great place to come to try and test new parts of services and I think the consumer feel they have a great one. So that would be a great starting point in terms of good foundation blocks. Um, but what would I say then in terms of a couple of learnings then from us on Check and Fab? I'd say one which has been a real challenge for me personally over the past couple of years is that yes, we've got really good foundations to look at, but the UK is worth being aware there is a lot of scrutiny and challenge and uh, of disruption. And I think it's just worth you know, being aware of that. I think when we came from Sweden and Bukhara, we had a, a you know incredible growth thing there, we expanded across the Nordics and we were kind of used to being recognized for the value we were bringing in terms of disruption and value to consumers. And it, it was it was definitely a shock to us when in the UK we were seeing that kind of similar growth that we've seen in our established markets, but suddenly so much challenge from media, from politicians, you know, around our products and were they good for consumers and whether they might protection for consumers. And I, and I think one thing to be aware of is that Ultimately, it's unsurprising we have that scrutiny. We're very quick to have a strong demand. And I think it made us reflect on making sure that we were really clear in how our products and services work, and really investing time up front to educate on how your products and services work. We were running so fast at kind of uh, meeting consumer demand for those services that actually we missed a few steps probably early on in terms of educating them, you know, building our understanding of our products and services, whether that is political circles or disparate circles, whether it's media sectors. I think I'd really encourage that, you know, to be aware that that kind of terms of scrutiny could come, but actually there are things proactively that you can do to avoid that. And I, I think that leads on to probably one of my last kind of lessons which I'd want to share, which is how can you go about that then to do the scrutiny, educate, and so forth. And one of the things I would really encourage is to use the networks that are available in the UK. So that includes kind of your foundation like the Business Check Club, a really interesting So government, we have a partnership for international trade in terms of um, helping to support and connect you with the right organisations. It could be easy to do so, you know, find that right type of network. Um, and I, I would really encourage you to partner with those groups and, and learn from one another and share best practice. Because I think, again, if I reflect on our journey in the UK, we launched here 2014-15. And I think the first couple of years, we were really trying to do it all ourselves. And I think Klarna will do it our way. Actually, I think as we started to grow and we had some of that scrutiny and challenge, we realised the huge benefit of partnering with collaborative partnering with organisations, even um, the regulator, and making sure that the FDA have, for example, in terms of brand box and scale box laws. There's so much support out there, but you know, I would really encourage you to, to <coughs> identify what support is best suited to you. There are lots of organisations that can help provide that. So that would be, I think, when I look at our journey in the UK, foundation block for me is in terms of for consumers and business consumer services, but to make sure you mitigate some of the challenges and scrutiny you get, make sure you're partnering with organisations that allow you to proactively engage and educate your products and services um, and avoid kind of reinventing the wheel in that area. So I hope that's been helpful as people listen to my talk on some of our lessons we've found, and I wish you um, a great visit to London and the best of luck with your business in the future. Thank you.